this. Uh-oh. That'd be nice. Uh, one day. And we're off. Hello, so Good start. <laughs> nope, that audio is crap. So we're going back. <sighs> one of these days, everything will work fine. Hopefully. Okay, that oh, seems to be working now. Cool. Mm. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Hi. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. And for the viewers, welcome back to our 24th session now. We're actually <laughs> making our way in two times in a week. How about that? Um. So yeah, just to recap, I guess, uh, from last session, the party made it to Elfrost. They made their way in. Uh, we had a few folks that got kind of got interrogated by some entity in their minds. Um, Warwick, who was detained and who was basically screaming out of his mind, was visited by his patron. Uh, Asmodeus paid him a visit while he was in his debilitated state. And was given some directive by Asmodeus on what to do next. Uh, and also provided him some protection from something that was trying to uh, probe his mind for information. Uh, we also had Nymphus, Julian, and Xyleth also get their minds probed while they were uh, waiting for uh, uh. Belto who was summoned by one of the council members to kind of give a little bit of a debrief on his journey to Hinkdale and back to Elfrost. Uh, he was uh, debriefed by an elf by the name of Nasare Everin, who he did not visit on his last time to Elfrost, but uh, assuming that he was sent uh, kind of preliminary by the council to give an account of what happened, uh, he met up with with them, and then got, had a chance to talk with uh, Ilenia, who was the Eldrin that met Belto outside of Elfrost, and actually brought Belto to Elfrost, and got to kind of catch up, talk a little bit about his journey to Hinkdale, what happened and what transpired there. And as the group came back together, as they were released from their holding rooms and were brought to a uh, kind of centralized place. To come back together, the party kind of talked amongst what happened with each other, what their experience was as uh, they got into Elfrost for the first night. Lorik now has his wits about him, or at least his uh, normal silly wits uh, back to him now, and everyone was brought together, told that the council was not going to be able to see them that night, and they were given places to sleep for the night. Um, and that's where we pick up our uh, our session here. I need everyone to go ahead and roll perception checks, please. Uh, what on perception, sorry? Just roll perception check. Oh, just perception. Yep. Uh, 12. Uh, 16, 12, 21. 11. And Belto. Cool. All right. So as morning breaks, uh, you all are, um, you get the kind of the weird sense that you had before of the ever persistent light coming from some kind of aberration that's part of Elfrost, as far as you can tell, and the morning dawn of um in the morning done everyone is kind of goes about their morning waking up and, and doing things oh it looks like we have a, a random asmodeus joining cool um as you all wake up is there anything you all want to do before kind of go, going back to the main meeting room that you 
Um, uh, are we rested? Are we back to full HP? Yes, you have a full rest. For night. Wonderful, full HP. Wonderful, long. Yep. Let's <clears throat> go. Cool. Uh, that was just what I was checking. There's nothing else I wanted gotcha. to do. That I'm good. Um, so you all wake up. You all uh, slowly make your way in. There's a refresh of the uh, edibles that you similar kind of fare that you had last night. Um, berries, nuts, cheeses, and anyone have one to say anything in the morning to anyone else as you're all waking up? Are we in separate rooms as we're sleeping? You all were given separate rooms, yes. Okay. Nope, I'm still grumpy fuck, and I want to talk to these fuckers. <laughs> okay. Uh... I would probably be jotting down a lot of stuff inside the room still before coming out and meeting everybody. So probably take a little longer than some of them that come okay. out there. So you take your time, you, you meet up with the rest of the folks, and you realize that uh, everyone's up except for Belto. <gasps> you wait another maybe I, 20 minutes or so, and he's still not there. Good morning, everyone. Um, um, let's see. Wait. Uh, how did you, how did everyone sleep? Pretty well. Pretty good for the situation, you know. I ate my cheese. I went to bed. What more can I do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have to say, these blankets and stuff are very fluffy. Like, the material is very uncommon. After about uh, 10 minutes go by, you catch a, a glimpse of Belto actually coming back in from outside kind of the courtyard where you're at, going back to where probably his room was. Balt Balto! Balto! Oh, hello, Nymphus. Where were you? I was summoned again. Is everything okay? Are, are they going to see us anytime soon? We've just been trapped here, it feels. That was part of why I was called again. Getting blamed for bringing you all in, but at least one, two of the members of the council are vying mm -hmm. for being uh, courteous and providing a meeting, but Given Elfrost's general nature, it seems, that I was pr unaware of before yesterday, as well as a few other factors. Uh, it's been a bit of a fight between the council members to get you an audience. And as you're telling me this, I'm actually making, like, a plate of food and everything on the side <laughs> and handing it to you and also on the Xyla. Oh, thank and, you. <laughs> and whoever is is not eating yet or anything. I'm just, like, being the last one and still seeing people not eating yet. Wait, Belto, are we in trouble? Not necessarily, but like the guards were saying, there's supposed to be apparently a process. I was lucky enough to get special uh, treatment the last time I was here and a quick audience, but hmm. especially given the history of Elfrost and some unfortunate things in the past, he looks over to uh, poor Wilric. <laughs> <laughs> it's politically challenged to get this arrangement for you all. Hmm. They surely don't like tieflings, eh? <laughs> Evidently. Uh, one of the council members mentioned something about a scourge in the past. I'd know nothing of it myself, but given that and what we were told yesterday. So what are we allowed to do while we're here? Is there a library? I have not been able to explore the city myself. Is there a guard nearby? There, there are two guards standing immediately outside kind of the kind of court that you're allowed to kind of dine in. It's kind of general open table seating area. So there's two guards right outside. What would kind of lead you out back to the city? 
Okay, I, I talked to one of the, I, I motioned to one of the guards. Hey, is there a library? Are we allowed to read anything? Um, one of the guards looks at you and he's like, uh, yes, we, we do have some, some library and archives, but uh, we were instructed to keep you here until the council had deemed an audience with you. Okay, that's fine. Can you bring some books to me? Uh, what would you be interested in? The other guy's like, like looking like, I'm not supposed oh. to talk. To <laughs> it's okay. I won't tell you uh, that you guys are talking to us. Okay, I, we won't rat on you. It's your job to rat on us. But anyway, <laughs> um, like you know, well, we we're like, I don't want to feel ignorant to your like area here. So, you want to know what's like, you know, your history and stuff. The other guard chimes up and said. We were instructed to to make sure that you were cared for and that you stay here until the council is ready for you. Mm -hmm. and the other guard just kind of like stands back at attention. Okay, so no books. Okay, it's is that cool? It's tough crowd. Very tough crowd. Mm -hmm. So no hat. <laughs> <laughs> I look over at Zyleth and I'm like, um, are you okay? Yes. After a good night's rest, I feel better now. Thank you. You get there. You get you get the oh, sense. Sorry, go ahead. Of kind of what Belto was talking about is probably pretty true. The there's definitely some tension with your arrival in Elfrost that's causing a little bit of a unsettling situation with. The council and probably some of the uh, larger figureheads that are in Elfrost. Uh, the sense that you get from the guards is they're obviously not trying to make they're trying to put on the side that you're not like jailed or anything, but they're trying to make sure that you don't go off where quarantined. you're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> to put it loosely, I oh, guess no. you're quarantined. Yeah. Essentially. No, not again. Isolated. <laughs> We are a foreign entity. <laughs> but this time with friends. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> uh, All right. Another hour or so goes by. Uh, nothing seems to happen. The, the sun continues to, to rise. And the effect that it has on the city is uh, very unique. The, the morning sun kind of had a very... Uh, low soothing, kind of very. What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of shimmery effect as the way it, it comes over this certain part of Elfrost, the way that the sun rises, and as it gets higher and higher, it seems like different parts of the Elfrost city itself are almost like kind of woken up, and there's almost like a, a life to the city itself. So as people are waking up with an Elfrost. It's almost like there's pieces of Elfrost that's also waking up, almost like as if parts of the city are alive. Yes, Xyleth. Um, I forgot to ask, am I still charmed? No, at this point, no, no, no one's charmed. Not anymore? Okay. That's all. And the effect has worn off since, since before. Okay. Um... I guess while we're still waiting, I'll probably be talking Xyla's ear off a little bit. <laughs> um, going into some philosophical uh, like talk about like heritage and and and, uh, and different like bloodlines and stuff, and how species and us are probably all related and, and everything. It's like, look, I was like, see, because like my my mom's like you know dragonborn esque, and and I'm not full on dragonborn, so something's weird. But you know. And maybe the family lines of, uh, of, of like, all blood, uh, all dragonborns, and we are probably originated from somewhere, right? So we probably could be related. And <laughs> <you> know, just, <laughs> you could be my long-lost brother. That's an interesting thing that you say about bloodlines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, like, I, I don't know further. I mean, maybe my grand-grandma, like, you know, she's... 
she's gone. She passed away. I've heard good things about her too. But you know, it's like there's there's a lot that goes on. And look, and I'm opening up the book and showing the the, uh, the adventurer party again, like that. It's like they these two used to work with my mom as well and travel along the lines. And but they're cool dragonborn friends too. And that- I have a copy of your book, so I'm gonna open it and follow <laughs> along with you. <laughs> yes. Oh, so this this is where it is yeah. in the book. <laughs> As you all are are dis- discussing and having the books, there there's another uh, guard that comes in and whispers something to uh, the two guards, and and they kind of acknowledge and they uh, stand back at their post. Something we need to know about. Are you are you asking that to the guard? Yeah. Uh, the one guard who was a little bit more uh, forthcoming with Nymphus before said, uh, no, it's just they're, they're still deliberating, but it seems like you will probably be give, granted an audience. Um, hopefully, oh, hopefully we'll hear more soon. Hope on the horizon. <laughs> Always good news. About damn time. I'll ask the guard again. So what kind of like local drinks are good around here? <laughs> he, he goes back to like well and the other guy goes, kind of shoves him arm, arms like uh, 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 <laughs> gives a shoulder uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe I can show you later <laughs> sweet um, and I'll, I'll I'll like I'll have a, perch, a parchment of like my name and everything right there I was like here you go for no reason just make it look suspicious. I know I'll slide it. I'll slide it in his arm or somewhere. Okay. On him. Call me on my cell phone. <laughs> no, there's there's no Numbers. number or anything. It's just my name. It's just your <laughs> name. Yeah. Just to make it look suspicious. Here, me. The other guys all like right. trying to talk. Yeah, just scry scry scroll. <laughs> uh, a little more time goes by, and as the sun continues to rise, there's. Uh, who is familiar? Who has a good, strong history? Or uh, was it? Is it intelligence as the history background? Was it intelligence is the base stat for history? Yes. Yeah. Uh, fifteen. Failed to dumb. Fourteen for me. Well, for intelligence. Yeah. What's your intelligence score? Twenty. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh. yep. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so. It's a bowling pool of right. smarts of the group. Right. <laughs> so, Panda and Julian, you both, mm. I think I, I mentioned this in the last session, I don't remember exactly, but um, Warwick, you definitely know for sure. <laughs> just given, <laughs> just given <laughs> your proclivity to other realms that Part of Elfros is actually the Feywild. It's part of another okay. dimension. Yeah. Uh, and Julian, you also get the sense that there's this other part of Elfros that, that seems otherworldly. And while you might not know the name of it, you've you, you've heard of the Feywild before, and you assume that this is what it is. It seems like a very strong connection of what you've heard of what the Feywild is. Oh, well, I've heard about it from the um, my my troops. Uh, a couple of owls under my command. Sure, we'll call it that. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that works. <laughs> and it almost has this weird kind of play. The city is almost has this breathing effect with the Feywild. So as uh, you see different little uh, Fey creatures out, little uh, fairies and other little uh, smaller creatures kind of running around, and you see these uh, big other creatures off in the distance that seem vastly different than what you would have seen in Radnorok before, so it's obviously part of some other realm out there, but the boundaries, uh, even though part of Elfrost is part of the Feywild, there's not really anything that kind of goes back and forth, except you see maybe uh, one or two elves kind of walk through this divide, but it's almost like they're, while it's visible, nothing really crosses the, the barrier between the two. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just just look out the window. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, go, I go up to the others. We've like, obviously, I've been eating and snacking on the 
who uh, that's been presented and be like, well, this city is quite um, unique. Um, anyone else know it's that? He's saying that, he's saying that to the group. Yeah. <laughs> well, up by the council chambers, you can oh. get quite a view. It it it, it seems. Um, this place, so I, I clearly know it's the Feywilds, don't I? So you do, yeah, yeah. So I was like, it, it appears that Delfrost is bordering, if not part of the Feywild. That is correct. Yeah, it is. Stay here too long. Ooh, you don't like it here, Julian. Julian's. I mean, uh, Nymphis is, uh, goes on and uh, his eyes are like wide and looking around and trying to take everything in. The Feywild. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> and he's like looking at different creatures and trying to see whatever. What is it? Like, can we go explore more? Meanwhile, you're familiar there is just kind of sitting there on the perch and it seems kind of entranced with just looking into the Feywild. Hmm. <laughs> From what I hear, the Feywild is quite prosperous almost with nature yeah unfortunately stories. <laughs> what have you heard the people who stay here too long they never leave that, that, that's concern <laughs> <laughs> just turn around get back to my food I just eat and then we're like oh no <laughs> About 15, 20 minutes later, another guard comes by and speaks to the guards again. It looks like it's someone different than the guard that came by before. And uh, another minute or so later, this entourage of about six other guards comes in. And um, the one who's been more stoic says, the council is ready to see you now. Very well. Please get ready and follow All of us or just one at a time? Uh, All of you. Let's go. Let's go. I'm grabbing up game, spell my food. I'm like, eh. <laughs> uh, as we're getting ready to go as well. Um, something I forgot to mention earlier is Belto's not wearing any of his armor or carrying any of his weapons. He's just wearing his uh, Claret vestments. Uh, <laughs> Belto's not wearing any clothes. Belto's completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. If Casual you bring any well. of your equipment with you, be prepared to surrender your weapons before being permitted into the upper area. So they didn't or... give you weapon weapons back. Oh. From what, well, everyone else. Like you had okay, sorry, stuff, sorry. Everyone Never else mind. had their weapons taken when... I, I forgot that. School. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I just realized I, mean, I didn't, didn't have any more weapons. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, I didn't say any. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you weren't, you weren't with the party, so technically you could have not known. Well, if I so. don't see them with any of their equipment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So they, they, they wait for everyone to indicate that they're ready. I'm ready. I go. <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave when everyone else is ready. Yep. I'll follow after Walric. <laughs> I'm going to follow yep. Nymphus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, whatever. All right. Yep. So th- and as we're walking, I'll ask Walric, do you remember how we met? I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's kind of it hazy. You see, I, 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 I no, no, no disrespect to you. Uh, I, I just don't have the best memory. <laughs> I, I roughly remember a bunny killing, well, hurting me. I remember. Part, <laughs> I can't remember it fully. And I just looked down in the humiliation. <laughs> it's okay. I'll show you about it in the book. Oh, adorable. <laughs> we'll keep walking. As the two guards that were watching you inside kind of the courtyard area, uh, they bring up the rear from you and then the other guards basically flank you with two other guards in front and you all are per being proceeded through the city um it seems like as you're making your way through the city they're kind of avoiding 
some of the main thoroughfares almost to try to keep your presence not as fully out there as low profile yeah low profile um as you walk through and you see some of the elves look at you some look at you in interest some of you look look at you in disgust or displeasure um it seems like the presence of all these different types of uh, races is not very common in Elfrost. So you're quite the, the ones that look. The ones that look with interest, I'm giving a big wave and like. There's a few kids that are like waving back, and there's some <laughs> some of those parents are are kind of like putting their hands down <laughs> as as you're waving. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, yeah, it takes you about twenty minutes navigating through some of these back alleys before you get to. Uh, you're going through several different layers of the city, so there's different checkpoints um, where you're kind of being shuffled through some some back doorways and some hallways. Checkpoint reached. <laughs> Checkpoint reached. <laughs> um, as you start to go through the different kind of layers of the city, you get you kind of get a sense of how the city's layout. So a lot of the residential kind of living stuff is mostly on the outside. And then you have a lot of your, your markets and trade um, kind of on a, a little bit more of a inner part of the city. And it's almost like the city kind of almost comes up to a, not necessarily a peak, but you took like a part of a circle and it's almost like it, certain parts of it kind of go in and up towards the mm-hmm. capital of Oh, Frost. So you may- right. um, as we we're going, also, can I, like, jot down a little bit of trying to remember the route that we're taking, the back and forth mm-hmm. and everything? It, I don't know if you want me to roll for that or anything to try to do that out. It's fine, but I just would like to uh, see if I can remember how it's the layout. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll a perception for me, please. Bada bing, if I got it enough. I ain't got it. <laughs> so you start trying to draw a loose path, but as you're getting escorted, um, you're taking, you're just kind of in awe with everything. So you, you lose track on where you actually mark some of the stuff. And you're just more taking in everything that's around you because you've never seen anything like this. So you're just like excited I'm to be here. too distracted. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you try to draw some stuff, and then after a while, you're like, eh. You, you start sketching some of the mm. interesting little, like, water features or statues that you see along the way and you start drawing some of those in your book instead. Mm. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to uh, what you think is probably more the political center of the city. You've gone through kind of the marketplaces and the trades center. You see a little bit more uh, kind of formal business conducted in other certain places. And then you see a lot more dignitary like elves so a lot more of the elaborate garb a lot more like clean garb or very like um silk and felt style that seems very indicative of specific uh type of elf as you get more and more to the inside of uh elf rost you you're given a kind of a place to hold the guards are there and one of them turns around and says we must wait here until the council is ready very well and there is a little place for you all to sit down uh kind of similar courtyard type area it's not nearly as big uh, it looks more kind of like a waiting space but it's very open air as you're as you got more and more into elfrost a lot of the architecture became a lot more elaborate, a lot more entwined with nature. So as more of the residential was, it still had that elven feel with the very swirly carving designs of the buildings and walkways that were kind of lined with natural elements like stones and moss and stuff like that. The inner <clears throat> inner parts of Elfrost are a lot more kind of looks like it's interwoven with nature and wooden artifacts. So you see a lot more kind of the, the nature, natural wood effects. And uh, for Belto, since you kind of noticed this before and were made 
aware of it, and Wilrick and Julian, um, you, you notice that parts of the architecture almost look like they're living. Like you see little pieces mm. of what kind of looks like it's more like spun pieces of vine or wood in certain areas. You, you catch a, a the glimpse, but it's almost like some of a, some of it like moves or breathes a little bit. It's almost like certain parts of the city are living and the, the trees and the woods that are part of Elfrost is an entity in of, a, of itself. It's kind of alive. In a way. As you're sitting there, you see a whole bunch of dignitaries and probably political figureheads and, and very fancy dressed individuals. Elves go in and out. Uh, it's almost like a checkpoint and uh, the guards there kind of know who's the normal clientele that goes in and out of this area. It's not a lot of traffic, but you figure the folks that are going in and out of here are, are probably higher ups or scribes or have some part of the political engine or that kind of cl level of class in, in the city. I'm not very good with vocabulary, so <laughs> I stumble over my words sometimes. Sorry about that. What kind of DMing? Doing great. Yeah. <laughs> that whole old English vernacular is definitely a thing, and, and I don't have that on the whim like most DMs do. <laughs> At least not yet. 33 years of living. Words are hard. Yeah. Words are definitely hard. A wimbo wit, a wimbo wit, a wimbo wit. So speaking of words, Beto will uh, speak up to the group while we're waiting. Uh, most important thing you all can really do, though, will be to just be honest with with the council they're Brent in this audience and this is highly abnormal as you might have noticed given the looks we've been getting th throughout the travels up here please just be honest so we can figure out how to proceed and get you hopefully what you're looking for and as well as hopefully maybe make things easier on the group Nymphus, what's up? I'll I'll I'll, talk, I'll ask Balto like, so this is part Feywild, and they see all kinds of creatures and, and stuff. Why do they? Why do some of them look at us like we're bad? Though there's so much indifference in this world that we're they're living in already. As far as I can tell, it's mostly just uh, the elves living in this area and. If I recall correctly, elves did originate in the Feywild, but I do not know too much history myself. I was focused on my religious studies more so than the worldly studies. So meaning there's no other races in the, in the Feywild? I do not know. Interesting. Wilrick? No. Does, does Wilrick know? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, do you know Wilrick? <laughs> <laughs> you you would know if, if there's other races <clears throat> in the Feywild. What races are in the Feywild? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I'm not yes. very knowledgeable. <laughs> yeah, 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 Will Rick, why don't you know? Fuck! That's what happened. I'll, I'll go over. Yes, you can be smart, I'll go over. smart in general. I'm going to go over to as I have the conversation. Like, from what I know, elves and what I know of uh, um, the very wild. It was, it's described as where they originate, almost where this, yeah, where they originate. Do elves come from <laughs> the <their fame? laughs> So, Belto, you have you had experience with one, the dryad, and the mm -hmm. en entities that you encountered with the party leading up was a yep. dryad and. You could share that with the group, saying that that's an entity from the Fey Wild. He was saying races, not different necessarily species. So Dryad is questionable. Oh well, yeah. rabbit folk apparently. Oh, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> We're gonna go into some stuff right now, aren't we? <laughs> from what little I do know, uh, I mean there are plenty of creatures from the Fey Wild. Elves are just the most humanoid. Uh, of the lot. Those uh, 
Doriads that we faced, the ones that charmed most of us on the way in, those originate in the Feywild and seem to have been coming out and bleeding out into Elfros's extended territory. So that wasn't part of Elfros? That was... Is that... Were they protecting Elfros, or were they just random encounters? I still don't know entirely, but considering I ran into one on my original trek to uh, here, as well as us encountering that group of them, it is a little bit concerning. Should we let them know? Is that something they don't know? I already maybe? informed. <laughs> okay. By the way, where is your armor? I left it back in the room. The slick version of you is very different. <laughs> As you all are. Salamandery, I say, I, is the word that comes to mind. I kind of hear that and I kind of look over at the. Looks down at Dragon Horde self, looks back up. What's that supposed to well, mean? <laughs> I do have some draconic ancestry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that I, I lean into Zylith. Is that an insult calling him a salamander? I kind of give Nymphus a look and be like, "Do I look like a salamander?" To you? <laughs> no, I said, I, I, especially I with the tougher looking scales now. I was, I was just, <laughs> Nymphus is trying to defend himself. It's like, no, 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 no. I meant like, is it, like, do you? Uh, God, there are a lot of cultures in the world. It's hard to <laughs> be perfect at, uh, and appropriate for each and every one of them. I was trying to, I think, you know, salamanders look slick and smooth and they're, like, cool. Like, I was saying that you look cool without... Nice save, Nymphus. Nice save. I appreciate the Julian, <laughs> as you're sitting there, when you, when you hear, when they start talking about whether or not Belto has the salamander, like, you see a couple of the elves kind of take a quick glance back and then resume their post. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just basically look at them and in Elvish, I basically say, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> they, they look back to you, not expecting you to speak Elvish. <laughs> Did you get to it? <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, you know, I take back the comment. I take it back. I, I will come back with a, a better one later. <laughs> Research. Nymphus goes back to his books. <laughs> Notes to sell salamander is an insult to dragon. <laughs> Shortly after this occurrence happens, <clears throat> another set of guards comes, and then the two at the front um, who were leading you before said, Get up. Time to go. The council is ready for you. Very well. Everyone ready? Wait, wait, I got another one. We're going to have a gecko of a time? Please, let's just go inside. <laughs> no, that one scratches <laughs> out. Bridges nose. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst he's saying all these ridiculous puns, I'm laughing in the background. <laughs> 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 uh, the gecko, okay. <laughs> I did tell him that this was quite a chaotic group. At least I'm not being inaccurate. <laughs> Proceeds. <laughs> You all are escorted, um, and this time you're led through some really weird back in back hallway type thing. Uh, it's almost like actually, who's at the f who's at the front of the line? I think it was Belto that went first, sure. wasn't it? Yeah, makes sense. All right. Belto, roll a perception check for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Roll that perception. Yeah. Soft twenty. Top 20, all right. You get the sense that the time that you were waiting in this kind of courtyard waiting area, they were clearing out a walkway to make sure that the route that you took was free of anyone else seeing you all. So there's almost some the kind of secrecy. Yeah, they're trying to keep the meeting with you all as discreet and as low-key as possible. Or <laughs> As we're walking along, he will uh, turn up back and be like, don't only be honest, but try to be respectful as well. Uh, it takes about seven minutes for you all to get to uh, the, the council room, but it's not really a room. It's actually very open. 
it's not even like an enclosed council chamber that you would kind of imagine some kind of uh, other council chamber to be. This is very open. You see a lot more of the intertwine with the tree-like architecture um, and all of the archways are, while they look very crafted, uh, it's almost like the trees were grown into these certain shapes to give the appearance of some kind of um, open space to have this, but it's all just nature ha was shaped into these archways, these hallways, pathways, stairs, seats, uh, and like you can see like some of the kind of furniture type stuff like tables and chairs, like they are freestanding, but they are almost like they were made out of wood uh, and then broken off as a piece. Uh, the guards ask all of you to take a seat. Uh, there is, um, from what you can tell, a, a few chairs that um, if you go into... So it's like a, a circular, not chamber, but it's kind of open. So imagine like a, a circle and then there are stairs kind of leading down into an area. On one side, you assume that's kind of where the council is going to be. There's chairs there along with this big table uh, that's kind of semicircular. And then you you go down and there's several chairs kind of arranged also in the semicircular area going looking the other way so they ask you to go down and um take a seat okay so yeah i guess we go try to take a seat and everything um i'm next to julian and uh i do, I do that thing where i accidentally sit in his lap by act because i didn't see he was going for the seat that he was going for i was like oh so sorry oh and you know get up and move to the next one over Julian's eyes closed, just literally just, just doesn't do anything. It's just like literally just shakes and just like <laughs> says nothing. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to take a break. And we will come back and have this. Roll for initiative! Have this <laughs> council discussion. So don't go anywhere, stream. We will be right back. Time to fight the council. Welcome back. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, mm -hmm. welcome back. Um, we are in front of the council chamber as we just went off to the break. And now our party is waiting for the council to arrive. Uh, it only takes about a minute after you, after all of you all are seated for the council to come in. Um, don't quite know where they are coming from, but as you're kind of sitting around, looking around, um, almost like they kind of came maybe up and around or through some other back passageway to their, uh, to their seats. And uh, as they come up and approach, they, uh, one of the, Elves there, Belto, you recognize it as Aircan says. Um, welcome, Belto and party. Uh, thank you for being patient with us as we deliberate. Uh, Belto, if I could ask you to please introduce your... Uh, I was going to say affiliates, but that's not the right word. Um, please introduce your... Companions. Companions, that's it. Yep. Like, Nymphus is writing down party? everything that are said. He's like, yep. It's like writing it down like he's in a courtroom. He's just like a type. Very well. Uh, here we have Nymphus Stormweather, Xyleth, Julian, and Wilric. Oh, hey! <laughs> As, <laughs> um, as as you introduce them, uh, they not and Eric says thank you, Belto. <clears throat> I'm not sure what Belto has told you of our interactions with him so far, but 
I'm sure you've noticed by probably the way you've been treated, we are not used to seeing many other than Elvenkind in the city of Elfrost, and the diplomats that we would normally see would have come through other means. As such, we are holding this council meeting uh, due to a number of factors, which, while some of us may disagree, he looks over to his other, uh, of the other part of the council that's up there. While some of us may disagree to this meeting, uh, we have come to the consensus that we will hear out uh, your request for reaching Elfrost. Goto has made us aware of some of the interests of the party uh, for those that have shared it with him. But we would like to hear them from you specifically. I look over to Julian first. Mr. Julian. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. And this next part's in Elvish. Why did you invade our minds? The uh, so Aircan, who was speaking before, um, said, "I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? I didn't quite catch that." Why did you invade our minds? Our thoughts are our own. Do you say that in Elvish or common? Elvish. Because <clears throat> I, 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 I don't want to share the fact that I've had my mind invaded. Whilst I know that Xylith did as well, I don't want to share the fact that mine was. Got it. This, is, this is not the first time we've heard him speak Elvish, right? No, you heard me earlier. Yeah, yeah. With Helen, that's right. He was speaking and, and translating for, it, for, for the group. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So. Uh, one of the other elves in the council up there said, uh, for the sake of the rest of us in the council, please use common while you're speaking here. Very well. Then may I have an answer to my question? If you care to answer, ask it, yes. We will ask, answer to the best of our ability. Why were we subjected to uh, your version of uh, interrogation. <clears throat> uh, the one elf that's talking and Belto, it's the the one that you met separately. Yep. Uh, who's asking the questions? He asks you, Julian. Oh. Uh, Excuse me. Um, what? <laughs> wow, that's what he asked. <laughs> uh, what kind of interrogation are you speaking of? And then Julian very angrily says, Why did you try and penetrate our minds? At that, the rest of the council kind of looks at each other like, uh, This is very... Kind of like a taking back, not sure what the question is or where it came from. And Irkan speaks up and is like, you said your mimes were probed while you were waiting to be seen? Yeah. Yes, mine and Xyleth's. Both our minds were probed. Why would you do that? Our thoughts are our own. Xyleth did mention this yesterday after uh, my meeting with you all. And then will chime in and say, yeah, they, they tried to do with the same thing with me, and it didn't work out that well on their behalf. Strong mind and all, whoever did it. I'm looking at each of them. Right? <laughs> 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 anyway, um, all the, the, uh, the, the council. But they were asking questions like what we're doing with, what are we here for for the rad shark and stuff, is what I remember. Eric can... Uh, looks at you all and says that is not a practice that we employ when we have newcomers even those that are unexpected and he looks uh, to the table uh, who has a passive perception of 15 or higher 
Before I roll that, or, or actually, don't no, who, who has it? Hold on, yeah, hold on. No, checking, 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 checking. With uh, Julian's uh, advantage, oh. those advantage on them are for hearing and smell specifically. Advantage when it applies would apply a plus five to a passive. Oh, 17 then. This is not a hearing or a smell. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just making sure. <laughs> before we, uh, we no. continue on the passive perception thing, I would also add on that. I also sent a letter to one of your guards respectfully to uh, inquire on this. So if you haven't received that, that means there's something going on between your rankings here that no one's actually talking to one another. Because, yeah, that happened. And I sent it to, was it, how many days have we been? Just a day? You've Just only been here a day. Yeah. Yeah, so I sent that yesterday. Hang on, remind me, what did you send? Oh, when the, uh, when we were in the cave, in, in the cell, right? air quote. You sent your and after. Out. Remember, I was the whole, I no, no, not the familiar. When um, after the mind probe, I was talking to the guard. I was like, is that natural? If that's not, who's, who's your leadership? Can I t- request to talk to them about this? Because mind probing and everything. Well, I was giving the whole... Uh, let me speak to your manager. The Karen talk. thing. Yeah, the Karen. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Forgot about that detail. Um. So, so the elf guard okay. was Elfrin. Elfrin. Okay. Yes. So Elfrin. Julian. So, so Julian still rather agitated. Basically, was just like, I have the greatest respect to your people. I have fought and bled alongside elvish folk, but how dare you treat us this way? Erkan looks at you and says. <clears throat> Any envision of the mind or probing of this kind is not something that is in our repertoire. And while I can't speak to your experience specifically, if that is something that is certainly happened, we can discuss that and, and try to get to the bottom of that. But that is not something that we do to newcomers to the city. I'm not sure. So you're... So you're saying it wasn't you? No one under the... Command's not the right word. Uh, this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, no one under... I know, yeah. yeah no one under... Basically, he's trying to say that no one that would be part of the council yeah. is like permitted to do that or to execute something like that or to tell... Can something I, like that to can happen. I, can I see if I actually believe them or not? Like, can I see? Well, if, you know, I can detect any thoughts. Oh, That's you. what I was uh, requesting on the side. <laughs> mm, shit. So, so close to that eighteen. Would you like me to roll as well, Dust? Given you, you uh, may roll. You may roll, Belter. Right. Yes. Or for perception. I would. I would love you to. I would love you to roll something. Insight. Yes. 17. Okay. Basically, all I'm trying to look for is if anyone seems to be hiding any knowledge. I obviously won't know what they know, but just if they're trying to stone face at any of these details. Uh, say that one more time. What are you trying to perceive? I am just trying to glance across uh, the group and see if there's any of them that are trying to be a bit more stoic and stone-faced to hide if that they do know something about this while Erkin is saying this. You do that sounds like you a yes. You notice one of them <laughs> seems to react a little bit different than the others when Julian brought this topic up. Which one? <laughs> Which one do you think? <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, well, I, at, at this, I'm guess. So I'm guessing Julian does not see this and does not no. perceive this. No. So, so, so as far Julian, as you you aware, as far as you know, Erkan is being truthful in what he's saying that probing okay. probing of minds is not something that they do here okay. as as normal practice. Very well. I apologize. That's a problem. I'm sure this is it is very unsettling, especially for being in a new place. And that is something I will have looked into. 
I believe we may have heard word of it happening. And as I'm sure you are aware with the state of things and your arrival, uh, we, we couldn't address it immediately. I go, yeah, hi, it's Nymphus Stormweather. Um, he, Eric can puts up his hands like, please wait your turn. Thank you. So Eric can goes back to, to you, Julian, and says, uh, beside the, the intrusion, which I am regretful to hear, but appreciate you bringing that up with us. We will get someone to look into it. Uh, what brings you to Elfrost? So, um, myself and my party, we were traveling along a road, and um, <coughs> we were instructed to go to Elfrost by a, uh, a villager who said that we might find answers to uh, a rat shard in this place. The other council members kind of look to each other uh, while Erkan continues to look uh, to you. And what do you know of the rat shard? What have you heard? Very little. Very, very little. Only that it has the power to, for want of a better word, grant wishes. I see. And is it your desire to seek out this rat shard? And what would you plan to do with it if such an object exists? I have no desire to hurt anyone here. But respectfully, my intentions are my own. And I would gladly ask that you not ask again. Roll a persuasion. Check. Erkan <clears throat> gives a nod and says well I respect that we must make sure that the uh, information that we have here in Elfrost is uh, maintained and whatever as I'm sure you are f familiar with given your status Julian that I seek one who betrayed me. I see. And who is it that betrayed you? Cyrus. You have a last name? You're just saying Cyrus as the name. Just Cyrus. Yeah, just Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just Cyrus. Cyrus. For now. Okay. Uh, there's not much reaction from the elves, but just saying the name just as Cyrus. Um, okay. But they kind of look around almost another like another who is wolf Cyrus? Kind. Another wolf kind. Wait, was it a wolf kind in the dream? Oh, wait, no. An elf. No, wait, no, he's a, no, he's a human elf. Yes, elf. A human elf. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. No, it, it was, uh, yeah, Demetrius was the other wolf kind. So, yes, you are right. Yes, yeah. So That's why I was asking, because it's like, okay, if, if yeah. you're only saying Cyrus, then they're not going to pick up on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I, 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 don't, I just don't think we'd agreed upon, like, a, a surname for Cyrus. That's the thing, you know? Well, <laughs> like, like would you say up. it if you knew it? Uh, okay. Yes. Then in that case, I'll say that... Um, there is a reaction out of one of... The, what's your passive? It was... Of 12. 12. Uh, but with 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 hit spell and hearing seventeen, but to a twelve. Okay, I'll I'll say that. Belto, there there's one of the elves. It's not the one previously, but it's it's the other one that was late to the meeting. It has kind of a very stoic response to late to the prior meeting this morning. Yes. Okay, just to make sure I know the right person. Yes. And, and once again, Julian doesn't pick up on this. This is just you, you, up on this. you get the sense from the council themselves that they're trying to place the name. Like, they've almost heard it, but they can't really okay. place it. Okay, that's fine. I, I don't know this. The person. <clears throat> yeah, but you get a sense of that. Maybe they know Osiris. So they, they're, like, trying to think of who you might be talking about, but there, there's no indication okay. that they know specifically. Um, 
and Erkin says, um, and and Cyrus is a uh, who who is Cyrus? Half human, half elf. Let's see. And do you plan to use this rad shard to get retribution on Cyrus? Or is that a separate goal? I would like uh, answers. I see. He is the reason for this. And he shows the massive stab mark in his throat. Uh, you see one of the, the elven council members kind of almost take a, a little bit of a take back after seeing you pull down your um, chain mail or whatever you, you happen to be wearing at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to show off the, the scar and everything. Uh, Eric can come back. Well, I'm sure other answers can be found out other ways, but thank you for answering truthfully and he goes to geo goes to nymphus next yeah go like uh nymphus stormweather what is your purpose for coming to elfrost and this is actually this isn't urkan asking anymore this is actually um the next elf to his left, which is uh, Finia. She asks, she asks you, uh, w so what is your purpose here in Elfrost? What brings you into our city? Um, I come for a few reasons. Um, one, that Lady Cyrus Starmweather has been here before on her travels long ago, and I just would like to see it for myself. And my My main purpose, though, is I'm actually searching for my my real father, and with this power, I pro I know I probably would be able to find him somewhere. Uh, it's been a mystery. There's seems to be a lot of information about him erased, and I'm just trying to figure what's going on. Uh, the and the council kind of acknowledges the name Stormweather, and. Um, Erkan chimes up and says, "Ah, yes, Lady uh, Cirrus. We we know her very well. Um, oh. Interesting to see her her prodigy grace uh, grace us with his presence. So, welcome to Elfrost. Yes, I Apologies have a couple. That our welcome was not more welcoming. Yeah, I'm going to write. I'm I'm going to definitely jot that down later on on the on the history of how I attended when I." write my own adventures as well. She's got a, a couple of new uh, books here and of the adventures that you probably don't have here in your collection, and I would gladly drop some off for you guys to so you have it for, for future biographies and stories. Phineas chimps up and says, I appreciate the offer, but we shall discuss pleasantries later. For now, let's stick to the topic at hand. Are wish. you are you also interested in this red shard? Yes, this power should be able to at least give me an uh, inkling, an idea of where he might be or how to find him. And what do you know of this supposed red shard? I actually have nothing, no information from besides that it could be helpful. Full of persuasion. <laughs> Persuasion. <clears throat> Eighteen. Okay. Uh, she kind of gives you a stern look, almost like as like because the answer you gave compared to Julian's is is very different. It's like a hey, I want to like I'm looking for this as a way to find my father, and not like as a. Uh, another answer that she was expecting to hear. So she mm. is kind of taking a little bit of surprise on how you responded to her. Okay. And so it's a good, in a good way, or is it like, 
one is looking for bad and the other person is looking for good and, or a kind of a, a mix of both it's a response of like okay he seems to be telling the truth but the kind of response that she was expecting was not one that you gave um i would like to learn learn more about the rat shard uh or anything of whatever what we're actually trying to, what we're actually seeking uh is it, it it seems like it might be more than we expected from what the pleasantries you guys are reacting to with us uh what, er- what is the rat shard uh erkin speaks up and says uh we will be happy to answer questions so if you can Please wait while we ask y'all. Sorry, I have, I have plenty of questions. I'm not not the problem. I will wait. Not the problem. Um, and Eric can, uh, motions back to Finia, and Finia says, uh, well, thank you, Nymphs. Uh, I have no more questions. And he looks back to Eric can, and Eric, Eric can looks to his right. And, um, and there's another elf who starts asking Xyleth. Kind of along the same vein. Um, so what brought you here to Elf Frost? Another fellow Dragonborn joining another Dragonborn. That's a rare occurrence. Could it be that both of you all are after the same thing? Or were you all met along the way? Uh, we met Balto along the way. He was with us when we initially formed our party. I see. And what is it that brings you to Elfrost then? Uh, I joined these fine people in the search for the Rattard. And what do you hope to gain by finding this red shard, if it does exist? Much like Nymphus, I am also I see. Give me just a sec, my internet's going haywire, so I need to restart <laughs> Skype. <laughs> so hold on, hold on to that. Hold on to that. 